in May 20th, uh, I think the third uh, Sunday of May. And there we, uh, for those who are gonna be here, we need to discuss and talk about several things. And one thing we need to discuss and determine as a church is, um, is from the, uh, from the Louisiana Baptist Convention, rebuilding and construction, uh, I talked with Lonnie Wascom, uh, the missions director, about a few months ago, uh, a couple of months ago, and related to him that we still had needs and still things being done here at Bayou Baptist Church, and he said he knew of organizations and people that was that were still giving. Uh, funds and helping, so we have a check for the amount of sixteen thousand um, dollars, and whether or not how we want to use it will be up to us. Uh, whether to asphalt the front of the church or whether just to use for the rebuilding, continuing rebuilding here, uh, but this will be a decision that will be made by all of us. And what I would like for you to do is pray about what the Lord leads you and what we need to do with it as a whole. So that way you can't say, well, nobody said anything or I didn't know about it. So 20th of May, we will discuss as far as what would be the right way in which to use these funds for Bayou Baptist Church. So just to let you know, uh, but right now we'll just throw it in the general fund, but we'll discuss as far as what is to be done. So hopefully pray about it. And I'll make this announcement over the next few Sundays up until the 20th of May. So the 20th of May, when we have all business meetings, we will discuss after hopefully everyone's prayed about it. And we we'll talk about what the Lord wants us to do with this as far as whether asphalting the front or whether not, or just whatever, however we want to use it. And, if, and this check comes from churches, individuals, or, and the corporate program fund. So we see, again, this is a water program that we've been given into. It comes back to us as well. It's funded by the state convention and SPC agencies throughout Louisiana. And in here, uh, in it, he says, it's to assist Bayou Baptist Church with disaster relief, building repairs, parking lot project, whatever way we would want to use it here at Bayou Baptist Church. So just to let you know, this will be discussed on the 20th of May. So hopefully, We'll uh, discuss it then so that way everyone knows concerning that if we have a business meeting. Also, if you would like, and I'll put this on the bulletin board, Bethlehem Baptist Church is having an old time camp revival on May the 14th through the 18th. Uh, at 7 p.m. Or it was days, 14th, 15th, 16th, 17th, and 18th. It's Bethlehem Baptist Church on Third River. Highway 41. Uh, sure so if you would like to go to that from the 14th through the 18th, more than welcome to go. And I'll put this in the bulletin board in the hallway and you can look at this if you want to go to an old time camp revival meeting at Bethlehem Baptist Church. And I've been to Bethlehem Baptist Church, it's not a Southern Baptist Church, it doesn't mean we don't have to go. If you want to go, you can. Understand what it is. It's, it's a missionary Baptist Church, is that right, Tony? Yeah. Yes. Missionary Baptist Church. So if you would like to go, you can do so. Uh, and it's really good that. So I'll put this up there for you as well. Any other announcements? Anything else we need to be aware of? Or anything else that I may have forgotten uh, that you need to be aware of? If not, our Old Testament scripture is found in Jonah chapter 3. Jonah chapter 3. In this here, we see where Jonah, after being spit out, or being coming out the belly of the whale, after the whale, by God's command, vomited Jonah out onto dry land, Jonah finally does what the Lord wants him to do. So we read from Jonah chapter 3. But the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. Go to the great city of Nineveh and proclaim to it the message I give you. Jonah obeyed the word of the Lord and went to Nineveh. Now Nineveh was, very, was a very important city, a visit requiring three days. On the first day, Jonah started into the city. He proclaimed, 44 days and Nineveh will be overturned. The Ninevites believed God. 
they declared a fast, and all of them, from the great, from the greatest to the least, put on sackcloth. In other words, they came repenting before the Lord. That's what it means by putting on sack, sackcloth, and they sat in ashes and was even more. It says, when the news reached the king of Nineveh, very great, powerful man, he rose from his throne, took off his royal robes, covered himself with sackcloth, and sat down in the dust. Then he issued a proclamation in Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles. Do not let any man or beast, herd or flock, taste anything. Do not, do not let them eat or drink, but let men and beasts be covered with sackcloth. Let everyone call urgently on God. Let them give up their evil ways and their violence. Who knows? God may yet relent, and with compassion turn from his power and anger, and we will not perish. When God saw that they did what they did and how they how they turned from their evil ways, he had compassion and did not bring upon them the destruction he had threatened. I think this is what our nation needs today. A very turning to God. Our nation as a whole, sadly, has turned away from God. We are not a Christian nation as we once thought we were. We have turned from God, and I think this is a nation from the top down, Bush, all of them, need to turn to God, repent and turn from evil. We see today more and more evil being done in our land. The reason is people have turned from God. Turn out from God. Turn to Him. God is a very compassionate, graceful, and merciful God. Look to Him in everything and in all things. One other thing. Old Testament Bible tribute. Who was Abraham's first son? Isaac. No. Who? No. Ishmael. That was Abraham's first son, Ishmael. So just let you know, he's a Bible tribute. <laughs> well, but he does count. This is the reason that that's going on right now in the Middle East as well. This is the reason these things are taking place. But Ishmael was Abraham's first son. Of course. Right? Hagar was the mother. Exactly. Hagar and the Egyptian. Now, in a few in a minute, after Al comes in, or uh, after we sing and we have our New Testament, we all say the New Testament. Bobby could be that. <laughs> Four hundred and seventy-four. We are climbing Jacob's ladder. <coughs> we are climbing Jacob's ladder. We are climbing Jacob's ladder. We are. Given, given to Jesus to his disciples 
And we are disciples of Jesus the Christ. Matthew chapter 28, verses 16 and following says, Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Lord, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. And this is very applicable unto today. As I said, we are disciples of Christ, and we are to go everywhere and tell people of Jesus Christ. The true salvation, the one who died for our sins, and the one to whom we have access and can gain access to the Father. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes unto the Father except through me. <laughs> Only one way, through Jesus. This is what we need to proclaim throughout all the world. New Testament Bible trivia. Thank you for you speak. <laughs> Who was Elizabeth and Zachariah's son? John the Baptist. Very easy. John the Baptist, the only son of God who prepared the way of the Lord. So this was Elizabeth and Zachariah's son, John the Baptist. In the way of prayer, in the back of your bulletins there are written a few. But as you remember, these in prayer and many others as well. Danny Hall, message from Miss Virginia Hall. She gives her regards to both Anne Bernie. I'm sorry that she could not be here and wish she could. But she loves you both, and we miss both of you as well. She sends her love and her regards. Danny Hall is doing remarkably well. He is doing good. He is in rehab at Carroll Hospital. Uh, she only gets to see him on Saturday and Sunday now. He will be in rehab until the 17th of May. Unless they reevaluate, it's a little bit longer. But as of right now, it's the 17th of May. He is walking around with a walker. He is speaking. Still has a trach in, but they reduced the trach down from a 10 to a 3, which is, I guess, small. That's what they do, saying that cleans them off of the trach. So, uh, they still have a feeding tube in his side, I guess, and all that eventually will come out as well. But he is doing remarkably well. He is doing good. He is ecstatic. I mean, he is talking up a storm. I mean, just talking uh, and, and everything. So, she is just happy. She appreciates all the prayers phone call. She says thanks for all who have called and encouraged her and let them know that she's praying. That praying for, she appreciates everyone's prayers and she misses everyone. Sends a love and she says that she'll, she and Danny will be back. Just be patient. Uh, Danny wants to come back too. I fact, talk to Danny. She said, and Danny says, I want to go back. You know, he's ready to come home and ready to come to church and everything. So so yeah, so doing good. So just let you know, continue to pray for them and remember them in prayer. Uh, remember Joe Frazier's mom in prayer, Miss Mildred. Uh, she is not doing well. Uh, when we was up in uh, Gatlinburg this past week, one of the church members where we went to church at Piedmont last Sunday told us that she was in the hospital. She had a blood clot. I also know she all times have progressed to where it is not good as well. Just remember Joe Frazier's mom, Miss Mildred, and them also in prayer. Brad, thanks again. Appreciate your prayers. Uh, we, Debbie and I had a, a good trip this past week, uh, traveling there and traveling back from Gatlinburg, Tennessee. So appreciate your prayers and the traveling mercy the Lord has given unto us as well. Other prayer requests that you would like to share, concerns, thanksgiving, whatever you would like to share with us this morning. Anyone or anybody? Any? Laura's parents. Okay. Remember Laura, Joey, and, and Laura's mom and dad in prayer. They're going through a time right now. So remember them in prayer. I'm sure what. Well. Billy? Um, my brother, Lawrence, wife, is in the hospital with his blood in her lungs and one in her legs. And we want to remember her and our prayers. Okay. 
Okay. Okay. Yeah, just tell Patsy we're praying for her, but tell that's what happens when you go to, go to Georgia. <laughs> 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 that happens anywhere, but no, tell Patsy we'll, we'll remember our prayer and also Lawrence and Clyde will be blessed by the Lord. Absolutely. Other prayer requests? Uh, just kidding. Okay.
for us being on the road and the many things that take place. So pray for all who are on the road. And even just here in Slide Out, pray for traveling mercies. Pray for help. And I'm going to tell you, uh, it's hard. So pray for each other. During the course of the week, again, many things that come up now, many things that we don't. Uh, all of the unspoken prayers, many people with unspoken prayers, many things going on in work, home, within themselves. Pray and lift up each other in prayer. Let's go, Lord, in prayer. Almighty God, we come before you. We come before you, throne of mercy and of grace. We pray, we ask, and we beseech. We beseech your grace and your mercy and your help. Father, we recognize that we are sinners. Sinners coming before a holy and almighty God. But knowing also that your son Jesus paid the price for our sin. And so we come before you in the blood of Christ. We come before you knowing that by what your Son has done, we have been cleansed and made whole. But we humble ourselves before you. We lay at your feet all of these requests that have been mentioned this morning. The many things that are going on, the many things that are taking place, the many that are, have physical problems and physical ailments, we ask for your help. For those who are going through trials and tribulations, work at home or within themselves, we pray for them and we lift them up before you. We pray for those that are traveling and will be traveling. Watch over them and be with them. The many, many unspoken prayers, the many things that have been lifted up in private, we pray for them. The many that have been lifted up this morning, we lift them up and we ask for your help, for your grace, and for your mercy. For this country as a whole, Lord, we know that it is a country that is not looking to you, but we pray, Lord, that you will be gracious and merciful to the few who do look to you. Father, as a Christian, we are a minority, and so we look to you for strength, for grace, and for help in our lives. We pray for all the men and women in the, in the military and all that goes on with them and the families and all with the Iraq and many other things going on in the military. We especially pray for salvation. Salvation for friends, for family members, for co-workers, and for people we have never met. We pray for the lost souls, those who do not know Jesus. We lift them up before you. We pray you divinely in the being. Use us to proclaim the gospel. We pray for Bethlehem Baptist Church as it goes into a time of revival. We pray for all the churches that Father every day is a time of revival. Every Sunday is a time of revival as we give our hearts and our lives to you. The pouring of your Spirit comes upon us each and every day. Be with us, lead us and guide us. Lord, we thank you for your many, many blessings. Thank you for all that you've done and for what you are doing. And thank you for being with us. We ask it all in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's come now as our come to lead us in our offer to our hymn. 243, that stands we sing, sweet, sweet spirit.
before you, we thank you for your many, many blessings, Lord. As we come at this time, we ask that all is collected and may be used in the furtherance of your kingdom for the spreading of the gospel. In the name of Jesus, we ask it. Amen. Amen.
spiritual opportunities. Make the most of every opportunity. Here in this parable, we see that two of the three people do make the most of what the Lord had given them. You know, today we sadly say goodbye to Miss Ann and Miss Bernie. Mr. Bernie and both Miss Ann and Mr. Bernie have been with us for almost nine years. Is that right, Ann? Yes. Almost nine years. They have been faithful unto the Lord while here at Bayou Baptist Church. But you know, even before coming here, both have been faithful unto the Lord. They both worked for the Lord. And even leaving, they will remain faithful unto the Lord no matter what. This I am sure of. Wherever they go. And as they go, understand that a little bit of us will go with them. We will share in all that they do, and they will share in all that we do as well. Now, from this parable, I want us to see what a faithful believer does for the Lord Jesus Christ. Notice, first of all, in verses 16 and 17, the commitment of the first two, the one with the five talents and the one with the two talents. Notice their commitment. They work. They use. They are responsible. They are not lazy. They are not afraid to use the gifts given to them by the Lord for the work of the Lord. They go to work immediately. There's no hesitation on their part. They don't second guess what the Lord has given them. Instead, they go out and they use what God has given them immediately. It reminds me of what Paul, after Paul on the road to Damascus, there he is, he is saved. And what does Paul do after the Lord causes his blindness to leave and he sees again? It says immediately he goes into the synagogue and he starts preaching the word of God. He uses what God has given him immediately. There's no hesitation, nothing at all. They lose no time in using what God has given them. They let no grass grow under their feet. They begin to serve the Lord with readiness and with gladness. The one problem with the churches today, and I'm talking all the churches, including the Southern Baptist churches, sadly, people are lazy. We have too many people sitting on the pews and not using their God-given abilities and talents. Far too many. Why is this country in the shape that it's in? Because we are not speaking out. Because we are not gathering together as the unbelievers are gathering together. We need to gather together as well and use our God-given ability and talents just as they use their abilities and talents. We need to go out and tell all those of Jesus Christ. Commission was given to all of us, not just to the few. Go ye therefore to all the nations, making disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We need to stop sitting on the pews and start working for the Lord. Use what God gives to give, has given to us. Don't let any grass go underneath your feet. Use it. Do it immediately throughout the land. Go everywhere we can. We are the voice of God that needs to speak out everywhere. The neighbors, co-workers, people we come in contact with. We have the talents. We have the ability that God has given to us. And we are to use them. But God, I feel, has given every truly born again believer a gift, a talent that needs to be used. For understand what it says in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10. For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ to do good works which God prepared in advance for us to do. He's given us things that we know it. We just need to go out and do it. Go out and do it. Today, commit your life, your service, to the Lord Jesus Christ. Commit it to Him, knowing that one day He will be back again. And what will you hear Him say? You'll hear Him say one of two things. Well done, good and faithful servant. 
Or will you hear him say, you wicked, lazy servant? Which of the two will, we hear, will you hear him say to you? Secondly, notice the commendation that is given to the two of the three. Notice as he commends them for their service, the appreciation given to them, the thankfulness and the praise given to them. Notice the Lord commends, commends his faithful servants. Well done, good and faithful servants. And notice that for their accomplishments, for what they have done, but he also accommodates them for their faithfulness. More than anything else, they have been faithful. Whether it's been five talents or two talents, whether it's been many or whether it's been a few, they have been faithful. Faithful to whom? To the Lord. They were faithful unto him. He gave them the ability to help, and so they were faithful in using it. He gives us what we need, and we need to be faithful to use what God has given to us as well. If you notice, the one who gave, who was given five talents and another two talents, and then another also one talent. Understand, the Lord knows before he gives us these gifts how much we can use and how much we can stand. He will not give us any more than we cannot use. He will give it to us, and he will give it to us according to our ability, and he will also help us with it as he gives it to us. In other words, he just doesn't give it to you, and then says, okay, now you're on your own. No. Remember the last part of that great commission, and lo, I will be with you always, even to the very end of the age. Even in Acts chapter 2, what happened? The Holy Spirit was upon them, and they went out in the power of the Holy Spirit. Understand, as we go out, God is ever present with us. He is helping us. We are not doing this on our own. Our ability comes from Him. What we have comes from Him. And when we do things, it's not us doing it. It is He doing it through us. We are God's instruments. We are working for Him and with Him as well. And they were faithful. And the two who had these talents, the one who had the five and the one who had two, they knew this. This was of the Lord. We need to go out and do this of the Lord. The first century Christians, they went out. And they did the things of the Lord. If we are faithful, then we too will hear the Master say, Well done, good and faithful servant. And the third thing we see from here is their compensation. Notice what, what happens in these latter parts and throughout it, but also throughout verses 28 and 30. Notice the rewards that come to them. Notice that he, they, even the talents they had, they even have more talents and more abilities. They bear more fruit. And they are being more blessed by God by using their abilities and their talents. Don't you understand, when we use what God gives us, we are being blessed, but we're also blessing other people because they are hearing the things of God. They are being encouraged by what we do. Not only that, but we are also spreading the word of God and relating to them that there is hope, that there is a future, that there is life, and that comes to Jesus Christ. And that we are blessing other people by relating that to them because this world you will not find encouragement you will not find hope but in christ there is hope telling other people christ died for me and that's why i can sing even through the much devastation is because of christ living in me because of what he has done we can relate this to every person we go to See, God will bless us even more and give us even more grace to do His work. What we do is not, again, by our own ability or power, but by the power of Jesus the Christ. He left us with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is of God, it is God who lives in us. We are the temple of God. God does indeed live in us by his power. John the Baptist so relates 
and he tells the people concerning the main things about himself, of who he was, and he complained to them, I am not the Christ, I am not this, and I am not that. But understand, John replied and says, a man can receive only what is given him from heaven. See what God so gives to, to us. It comes from him. And also, revealing to us, in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 5 and following, Paul relates, and he so says this here. Here, as Paul so says, what after, who, what after all is Apollos? And who, after all, who is Paul? He says, we are only servants. Both Apollos and I. We are only servants through whom you came to believe as the Lord has assigned to each his task. I planted the seed, Apollo, he watered it, but God made it grow. You see, I can't do it. You can't do it. We go out and we tell people, God makes it grow. God enables. So neither he who plants nor he who waters is anything, but only God who makes things grow. The man who plants and the man who waters has one purpose, and each will be rewarded according to his own labor. For we are God's fellow workers, and you are God's field, God's buildings. You see, God gives us the building. God gives us the power. What does he say? Well done, good, and faithful servant. See, they not only did what they did because of the power of God, but they were faithful unto him, no matter how large and no matter how small. Now, this is not talking about earning salvation. Understand that. Many people have related this to earning. This is not talking about earning salvation, but this is talking about people who are saved by the grace of God and going out by His power and doing His work. Not to earn salvation, but to tell others of salvation. Or, but people who are truly saved and who are living and committed their life and their work to the Lord. But sadly, we can't overlook the third person, the one with the one talent. The third person, I feel, and this is here, and some will agree, some will not agree, this person was not a truly born-again believer. He was not saved. He knew the Lord intellectually. He knew the Lord right here. He probably read, or he probably, other things, he heard about the Lord. But in his heart, the Lord was not there. He was not a truly saved person. I would say he was like unto Judas. Judas, as you know, followed the Lord for three years, but yet never came to that point where the Lord was his master, was the Messiah in his life. He knew the Lord intellectually. He knew everything about him. And you know, the sad thing about it is that in the churches, we have people sitting in pews that know a lot but yet the Lord does not live in their heart and their life. And they're fooling a lot of people. But they're only fooling themselves. And we have many like this in the churches, but I'm, and, and, I'm, and sadly we have far too many outside the churches as well that need to be reached and need to be told. We live in a time today where we expect the Lord to come again. You know, we're living right now, today, we're living in a period of where verses 18 and 19 are so read. As it says, so all, as, he, as it so says here in these verses, but the man who had received the one talent went off and dug the hole in the ground and hid his master's money. And after a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled the accounts with them. We're living in the end times. We're living in a time where all people expect the Lord to come back, or many believers expect the Lord to come back again. It will be a surprise. Again, these passages here reveals and talks of the end times. From chapter 24 all the way through chapter 24, 25, it talks of the end times where Jesus said, this is what will happen, this will take place, this is what's going to happen, and so forth. We do not work for salvation because we are already saved by the grace of God. But we work to tell others of salvation. 
and we do his work. By doing nothing, we commit a sin. We're robbing God by doing absolutely nothing and not doing his work. You know, one of many people's favorite verses, I know it's Johnny Garrett's favorite verse as well because every he emails me, he has this on him. What good will it be for a man who gains the whole world and yet forfeits his soul? Or what can a man exchange? Or what can a man give in exchange for his soul? The Son of Man is coming in the Father of glory with his angels, and he will reward each according to what he has done. Again, where is your commitment? Who is it that you have served? Who is your Lord and your Master? Again, this man and Mr. Bernie have been faithful unto the Lord. It will be a sad time, of course, as they leave here. But we know that as they leave, they will be leaving with the Lord, and they have committed their life to the service and the work of the Lord forever and ever. But where is your commitment? And do you truly know the Lord Jesus Christ today? Which of the three servants are you like? The one with the five talents, two talents, or the one talent? Do you truly know Jesus Christ? Let us think. Almighty God, we come before you. We thank you for your words and for what you have revealed to us from your word. Father, if there is anyone here this morning whom you have spoken to, I pray that by your power, by your might, and for your glory, they have come unto you and embrace you and dedicate their life and their service to you forever and ever. We ask it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Turn number 300, 312. Softly and gently. If Jesus is calling you today, you come. And you come as I stand here in the front. You come unto him and dedicate your life and your, and your whole service to him as we sing. 320. All four standards.